Okay, right. So I'm Venerable Pekha, and I think I know pretty much everybody on the screen. <laughs> and it's very nice to see everyone again. I'm in Sydney still. Uh, we've come close to the end of our rains retreat. Don't know how that happened. Three months went by, and uh, we're three months closer to death. Anyway. <laughs> Today, actually, uh, inter I, 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 um, ironically, I got a message from Annette, who's online as well, um, whose um, husband passed away three days ago, three days ago. And um, so I wanted to talk about death and preparation for death. This is something I've been thinking about my during the whole rains and uh, Annette's uh, um, email that came yesterday was just um, a reminder of how how it can happen to our loved ones just three days ago, you know. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I just want to dedicate today's talk as well to Annette's um, husband, um, Andreas, who is, um, if he is there anywhere, may he rejoice in the goodness of Annette's life, of, uh, of our lives, in his life, and may, if he is around, may, he, may it propel him to a good new birth where he can hear the Dhamma where he is well supported, he has no, he has all his material needs met and he can continue, he can practice above all, practice the Dhamma to lead to leading to the end of all suffering. So let's begin with some meditation. And I hope you're all sitting in a um, comfortable place. And I, I I uh, thought we'd um, do a little preparation for death, a little meditation that hopefully if we do often enough, we will, it will come up into our minds as we pass away. So this is something that I, I, I learned from um, listening to some Tibetan teachings. But, you know, it is... Uh, just universal to any human being as we leave this body. And important things to bring up to mind, not only at our death, but every night, every day. I do this before I go to bed, as I fall asleep. So just bringing your mind inward. And allowing it to just settle down. Allowing it to draw into your body. Mm -hmm. 
and allowing yourself to turn inward. So imagine that you are going to be dead soon. For some reason, you don't know how, but your life is about to end. This is quite a different and unusual perception for us because we are so geared towards being alive. But one day, the day will come where this will be true. And so we train ourselves to pre be prepared for it. So the first thing we do is we bring up to mind, or perhaps it will come to mind, things that we hold dear, our children, our families. the home that we've lived in. Bringing them to mind. We see them Found us. And we say goodbye. We wish them all the best in their own journeys. We have done everything we can. Now it is their time. To carry on. We wish them with all our heart. May you be free. May you be well. May you succeed in your life.
So to all our possessions. The house we've lived in. We leave it. To our family, may they make good use of it. All our belongings, thank you for your service. Thank you for helping me be alive and we give it away. And also, it might come to mind and those who are close to us. We have little petty grievances, arguments, things that we may feel bad about. And so we ask for forgiveness. For my dear ones. For anyone, everyone in our lives. If they, we have hurt them, Sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. We ask on this last day, we ask for forgiveness. And we see them knowing that we will not meet again. Offering our forgive their forgiveness. We see them pardoning us. willing to let things go. Willing to let past mistakes behind. Accepting what we may or may not have done. And we forgive each other. At least from our side.
you find that your mind has wandered away. It's okay, just bringing it back. that memory of what we are doing right now. And so we have that image of today being our last day. This is it. We have come to the end of our life. And so the third thing we do after we have said goodbye to our family and asked for forgiveness. The third thing we do is to share our merit. To share all the good things we have done in this life. Bringing to mind people you have helped. bringing to mind all those many small and big, enormous perhaps, but perhaps just the small ones, those many, many acts of, of goodness, of kindness, of helping other people, times that we have found peace all our efforts in this whole life to be of benefit to the universe We share our merit freely with all beings. May the universe rejoice in the life we have led. In the work we have done. To be a good human being. We freely share the merit of our life, a gift to the universe.
May the gods rejoice. May the celestial being, may all the be all higher beings, all beings rejoice in the life we have led. And finally, we take refuge we ask that the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha be our guide our teachers, as we pass through this journey, We allow ourselves to surrender to the teachings of the Buddha. And finally, we let all that go and just 
allow ourselves to be. Allow the process of death to happen. Not resisting it. Not fighting it. But just being aware as this body leaves us, allowing the body to fade away. So we come close to the end of the meditation. And just spending the last few minutes noticing how your mind has changed if it is, noticing how you feel, and taking note of anything that happened during the meditation that was worthy of doing again. Anything we learned. Anything that didn't work. When you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes.
And have a good stretch. Because fortunately we didn't die. So I hope you found that exercise, that little meditation useful. Yes, yes, no, yes, 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 definitely. I, I've actually, I, like I said, I, I learned it from a kind of a, um, yeah, great, a, a, a Tibetan, Tibetan practice, because, yeah, and I actually do it every day, well, part of it every day, as much of it as that I can remember, before going to bed at night. Um, because, you know, we want to clear our slate and get used to the fact that, that um, we don't want to carry stuff over. We don't want to carry stuff over into the new, into the new day or new life. So it's just a really lovely practice to ask for forgiveness and um, give away our things because actually... It's the reality. We, we imagine all this is an imagination, but the, 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 the thing with all these contemplations is that the more that you practice it, the more it becomes, you understand this is real. It stops becoming an imagination and it becomes a, a, a something we go, oh my God, this is actually going to happen. So the more you practice it, the more it comes, goes from being a concept to reality. So I, I really um, suggest, recommend doing this more often. You know, just the simple act of asking for forgiveness at the end of the day, because there are these just little things with our, our, our loved ones and our um, workers, our colleagues, that we just... They fester and they accumulate, don't they? And um, then we come to the end of our life and it's just one, just one big shock. But every day, if you can just say, I'm sorry, you know, I love you, just in our minds at least, to the ones who are close to us. Um, I find that tremendously healing. Yeah, so today I thought I'd... Um, um, talk about um, the about how the Buddha uh, talks. Uh, um, oh, great, thanks, Richard. How the Buddha um, has talked about death contemplation, and um, well, yeah. So, 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 death contemplation is practiced quite often in um, Burma especially, as one of the like four protective meditations. So it's again another list, but anyway, something that's done regularly um, every day is there are four things to think about. Okay, not the four things to think about, but anyway, uh, they're called the four protective meditations. So the first one is um, contemplating our death. The second one is reflecting on the qualities of the Buddha, Buddha Anusati. So we sort of did that as well as part of this meditation, reflecting on, on the, the something that is pure and beautiful, be it the Buddha or uh, a teacher or um, something you can take a refuge in. And the third one is um, metta bhavana, loving kindness. And the last one is asubha, which is not very popular, but it is the 
um, the the body being foul essentially this body is just not worth holding on to we spend so much of our time dressing it up making it look beautiful but deep down not very deep down inside but we're just covering up well a whole bunch of muscles and blood and and poo and we and you know that's actually all the body is so just to well, sorry but <laughs> that is one of the four contemplations so that that's that's one place that uh, the buddha talks about death contemplation um but yeah what 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 as as you can see so um what is death contemplation um so it is like we did just now bringing up to mind the fact the thought that our life could end at any time so it could be a, a, a meditation like we just did or just the just the uh, sort of awareness of it as we go through the day like i said some it starts off as a concept as a memory but after a while it becomes something real something we live by and it's tremendously helpful because for me it transforms how we relate to the world isn't it that most of our day most of our life all of our life is spent just just obsessed with trivialities you know um trying to make something work trying to uh you, you know get our job some minute conversation that we had that was irritating something someone said that you know they shouldn't have said it um most of our life is trying to somehow keep this me this i just just somehow going you know we must exist at all cost isn't that right that's 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 really what we do and so when we reflect on the fact that we could be dead any moment um these things are seen in perspective we stop being so well for me anyway you kind of go like look if this person who i'm really annoyed with if she i find out that she had a heart attack and died tomorrow would i be so obsessed with what she said so not only our dead but the people who are in our lives if they were if we were to know that they were going to die would we still be focused on those little small things so death contemplation for me anyway helps us to let go of all those small things that take up our whole existence so the buddha actually um talked about how to how to contemplate death he he had there were four monks that um that uh well who, who asked him about about uh, death contemplation and he said um well or he asked them he asked um, these four monks um venerable sir how do you reflect on death and uh, the first one replied um uh venerable sir i imagine that if today is my last day how would i live i imagine that today is my last day and so the brother said okay well that's good um could be improved and he asked the second mark um how do you reflect on death 
And uh, the second monk replied, well, Venerable Sir, I think if this is my last meal, how would I live my life? That this may be my last meal. But they said, okay, could be improved. And um, ask the third monk, how do you reflect on that? And the third monk replied, Venerable Sir, I think this may be my last mouthful of food. This could be the last morsel of food that I take. Presumably they were sitting at a meal. <laughs> and the Buddha said, hmm, could be improved. And uh, he asked the last monk, who got the answer right, <laughs> How do you reflect on death? And um, the last monk replied, I think, Venerable Sir, that this could be my last breath. So this is ultimately how we reflect on death. But for most of us, thinking that this is the last breath is a little bit high practice. So I often think um, on just a more practical mundane level, if I had, say, one year to live, not even that, let's say I had three months to live, or let's say, okay, let's say a year, how, what would I be doing this year? If I knew at the end of this year that that would be it, would I still be doing the same things that I'm doing right now? Or would I change anything? Would I change my job? Would I um, spend more time with my family? Um, would I go on a retreat? Ordain as a monk or a nun? <laughs> Um, what, what would I do in my life if I knew that I just had, say, three, six, one, say, three months to live? So I find that a really interesting contemplation because, you know, often we're not doing what we really want, isn't it? Often we're doing what, you know, just getting the job that, that, uh, that pays the bills and, you know, taking the kids to school, whatever it is. But if I just had three months to live, what would I really be doing with my time? So this is, I find this is never mind one breath to live, but just give ourselves three months. <laughs> what would you be doing with your time? So, yeah. Um, contemplating death. So, as we um, try, it, it it's it's not easy to to um, kind of bring our mind to this idea of death. So we have to think of, of ways of making it sort of come alive for us because, um, because really everything we do is focused on somehow doing things to stay alive. So I don't know about you, but something that's helped me recently is I just noticed how, you know, my parents, how quickly they've grown old. I mean, it just seemed the other day that I was, you know, a teenager or 20-something 20, 20 years old and they were fit and able and they were, this is my parents, I'm 50 now, and uh, drive, they used to drive me around, go to the shops, jump out of the car. And, and now my mom, it's like, I don't know when it happened, but it, it, uh, 
it just takes her a long time to get up from the seat. This is my mom, my mom who could do everything. Um, and and she's a little bit hunched. Her hair is her hair is very gray. So is mine actually. And she's just so very slow. And in 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 no time at all, my mom has become my mom who used to be my mom is an old lady. My dad is an old man. Um, and this has just been a shock because I only see them every couple of years. I don't see them all the time. And and uh, perhaps when it comes to that age, you, 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 this, people deteriorate very quickly. Um, but this has just just been a bit of a uh, just a way of reminding myself. Oh my goodness, my life passes very quickly. We think that you know everything's going to keep going the same way but my mom and dad they're they're old people now my dad who used to race around the world is now stooped and takes time to get out of his chair so how do you how can you bring this this uh, this reflect this idea of death alive in our in our hearts so the Buddha had um, uh, a few suggestions. And another one, another one that I found useful is that you remember the actors and actresses. I'm like old, right? I'm not that old, but you know, actors and actresses of, of, of our youth. And I saw some pictures of them like recently. Um, Julie Roberts, Julia Roberts, or who was who was Sound of Music? Um, I can't remember. Anyway, Ju, Ju, Julie Andrews. That's right, Julie Andrews. An old woman of eighty something, you know, wrinkled skin. She's just definitely not the Sound of Music legend anymore. Singing, oh, the hills are alive. She's an old lady. So that has uh, that just seeing just seeing how. Nobody, however successful and beautiful and um, young they were, that everybody comes to old age and eventually dies. When you think, when I think of um, great people, of you know, even um, great. Uh, uh, say Caesar, I don't know, great emperors, great pharaohs, great kings, great prime ministers, people who have made history, they're all gone. All of us, however fantastic we were in our lives, what happens to every single one of them? They are just dead people. However much you did to be extremely wealthy, extremely famous, extremely successful, all of that, we just die. Worse still, what we take with us is our karma and Goodness only knows where some of those people are right now. So just remembering that all our success that we, um, that all those around us, all those successful, talented people in a hundred years time, nobody will even know about them. They won't know about themselves they'll be gone. So um, that's one way I find useful to reflect on death. Um, another one that the Buddha suggested is that you never know the time, the location, or how you are going to die. That's completely unknown. We don't know the time. 
We don't know where. And we don't know how. It could be a car accident. It could be a long, drawn-out illness. All those things are completely unknown. So we prepare ourselves. Just where we are right now. This could be it. So, yeah, there's a, um, this beautiful sutta called the Rattapala Sutta. And um, anyway, it's a, it's a long, beautiful story for those who know the Rattapala Sutta. But um, one thing um, that Rattapala says uh, to King Korabia, anyway, is uh, this king who has <clears throat> who asks him why is it that a young man or he is a, is a well shall we say of a good family he's successful his parents are wealthy and he has become a monk and he asks Ratapala why have you ordained basically you know why have usually people ordain when because they've lost their wealth or because they've lost their you know they're old or they've got nothing worth living for, why have you become a monk? And he says, King, it's because this world, this there's nothing in this world that you can, you can, um, can the world is washed away. There's nothing in this world that you can hold on to. And uh, he says, King, can you remember when you were, can you remember when you were a young man? So this is an old king. And the king says, yes, I certainly can't imagine what it was like when I was young. I, f I feel I must have been a, a super, you know, like a, 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 a yodha, a, like a great warrior, because now, when I want to put my foot in one place, it goes in another place. And I imagine, I imagine how it was that when I was young, I, I used to be able to, I had the strength of, of, of 10 men and I could, you know, wield a sword. And now all I, I, I can't even put my foot in the right place. So the, uh, the Buddha says, that's it. What you thought was, was, um, but what you thought was that you could have forever, your life, all this is washed away. And then uh, he and, and then he tells the king. So the king says, um, um, uh, "Yeah, uh, Ratapala says. So, for example, your wealth. You think you have all you know these granaries. You have gold." You have your family, you have your loved one, loved ones. When you are dying, have you have you ever come close to death? And he said, "Well, yes, I, I'm now, you know, in the last stages of my life, and I've come close to death many times." And he said, "Have you been able, King? Have your children been able to say, Father?" I will take the pain away from you and um, or, or all the money in the world. I will take all the pain away from you so that you can be free of, of anguish and free from all this difficulty of dying. Um, and uh, the king says, no, um, I have been in great pain many times as I've come close to death, but nobody, no amount of money, no amount of love from my family has been able to take this pain in my body away from me. So Ratapala says, all the wealth, O oh queen, that you have accumulated, all the uh, family, all the sons that you have had, 
Nobody can help you as you pass away. Nobody can take the pain away from you. None of that helps. You have to bear it yourself. So there are several other reflections that uh, Ratapala. It's a beautiful sutta. If if you if, if if you ever want to be entertained, <laughs> the Ratapala sutta is uh, just a beautiful sutta to to read. There's there's many there's many parts to it, but those two in particular, I um, remember that nobody, however much wealth you have, however many children you have, who have succeeded, none of them can take the pain of your body away as you come to the end of your life. So I just, uh, well, um, we'll stop there now. And yeah, just uh, hopefully those were all, these are all just things that I have, I have found useful to help me bring the, the, the sort of reality of death alive in my mind. Um, oh, uh, Sean sent a good link. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to uh, open it up to all of you and ask you if you had something to share or um, how you bring this idea of, of the reality of death, how you, how you could, how you make it alive, or just any questions or, um, yeah. How did you feel about the meditation or anything really? Yes. If you raise your hand, I can unmute you. How how did you do you, do you, how did you find the uh, contemplating the the meditation the sort of um, four reflections? Oh, Kaz says yes, thank you, venerable. Thank you, Kaz. Were they useful? Something you could practice? Oh, Kar Karin had her hand up. And there's Karina B as well. Hello, Karina. Okay. So perhaps Karin, did you want to say something? Okay. The Manori, I think Karin wanted to. Oh. Yeah. Say something. I'm trying to unmute Karina. Karin, Karin. Ah, oh, sorry, Karin. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Good to see you, Venerable. Uh, good to see you. You know what? Um, not to answer your question, but I've just had a huge realization. Um, my father died, see, and I can't remember when, how many years ago, because I've separated quite a bit from that event. But uh, what I remember was a huge anger I had towards him because when it came to the end of his life, I think it's 10 years ago, so I'm 60 now, I, I was 50. I was very angry that my father didn't pass on any wisdom. Mm about what is it like to come to the end of the life? What can you teach me as your child? Almost mm -hmm. like a bit of a sort of legacy. Mm -hmm. And listening to you, I, I realized, gosh, Karen, did you ever 
What did you give to him at that time in his life? Mm. Did you ever say mm. thank you or mm. forgive you or forgive me? Mm. I've always looked at it from one side and never mm. from, well, what about me? Mm. What can I give you? Mm. No. Yeah. So thank you. That that has released yeah. something very important in me. That has allowed me to make peace and let yeah. that very one-sided disappointment. Mm. That wasn't the whole story. Right, right. You know. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're all. welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, we take for granted what our parents have done for us. And um, um, yeah, the example of their lives is itself a teaching. Yeah. So I don't know what your your dad was like, but most of our parents, they spend, they really do their best to look after us, to 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 help us grow up and um, uh, benefit society, and we we actually rarely reflect on them as individuals, as persons. And, um, well, I, I think of my mom and or my dad and go like, wow, they've really done their best, you know? And the example of their life is, for me, for me, I have, you know, I'm very grateful and is a teaching. The things they have taught me just by how they've been. So I thank them for, I thank them for that. Yeah. So there are a few comments here. Um, uh, let's see. So there's, uh, let's see, so there's, there's, um, Uh, no questions as such. Yeah. Am I missing something? But there's no questions as such. Yeah. Okay. Ah, several hands up. The minority, maybe you can... Um, Unmute people. I don't know who was. First. Yes, I am. I, I, I'm uh, unmuted, Sandeka. Okay. Hi, Venerable Pekka. So nice to see you. Um, yeah. And thank you for that. Yeah, really powerful talk about depth contemplation. Um, mm -hmm. So with the depth contemplation, I'm also wondering, because um, I, I read that sutta you said about that Every time you breathe, you know that that's how often you should think about death. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering, what's the balance between that type of contemplation, because obviously it helps you maybe, yeah, change your perspective on things, and you know, not, yeah, practice compassion and all of those kinds of things, let things go more easily. Um, but where is the balance between that and the fact that then you have to carry on with your day-to-day -day life, you know, like you still have to kind of do stuff and then how would you still live while mm. preparing for death? Mm, 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 is there mm, anything mm. that you can share about that? Right, yes. right, right. Yeah, how do you live while preparing for that? See, all these contemplations, they're meant to, they're meant to to help you so it's not contemplation for the sake of being morbid it's contemplation so sometimes we get it out of balance and get it sort of we overdo things and end up a little bit morbid but the whole point is that the contemplation helps you to live life more skillfully so if the contemplation is making you a little bit sort of like, oh, what's the point? Then it's not quite working. 
The contemplation has to help you feel, wow, what I'm doing is really worthwhile because today might be my last day. I'll do this with all my heart. I won't just kind of finish it up as quickly as possible and get home. I'll kind of like really do it with all my heart. Or I'll speak to someone knowing that they may be dead tomorrow. I won't kind of hold or kind of get annoyed with them, say, why are they doing that again? Um, so the contemplation is to, to help you be more, more happy rather than, uh, yeah, rather than be just kind of like, oh, what's the point? Yes, oh, I hope. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. No, thank you so much. That kind uh, of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. I think Indy had her hand up, but she's sort of disappeared. No. Uh, Indy is there, but uh, she's, Indy is there, she's, but she's gone, gone off. off. There yeah. is um, Janaki. I'm going to. Yeah, ask. Janaki. Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you. On, nice to see you. Once again, on a, on this time on the Zoom platform. But I I met you. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Last one before. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. So, um, that's about the death. I mean, death is not really an end. Uh, it's only a, just a beginning. So, but what I think is, uh, what, um, as Buddhists, what we should do is um, we have to think or pay attention to what sort of a beginning that we should have or we should be prepared for uh, while we are alive before we come to the death because it's really not an ending, not an end, mm. it's a beginning. Mm. True, 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 true. Yeah. I guess the way we live our life is a preparation for that new beginning. The things that we do is what we're going to do in our new beginning. If we uh, love listening to Dharma talks, then chances are next life we will love listening to Dharma talks again. So, yeah. Yes, true, true. What we put in is what we'll get out. Okay, Indy came back. Now I can see. Thank you, Janaki. Or oh, else I just want to make one. one yeah, more sure. Um, so should should we uh, or must we really try to make it a real end? Truly. What do you mean? End. What do you mean? That mean now uh, in this samsara, all what we are doing is we. We are born and die and born and right, die and right, 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 right. right. They are all right. the birth, birth and death. So, right. so, what, but, uh, all what, what we want is to put right. an end to this death thing. Right, 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 right. So, so sh should we? Well, um, ultimately, yes, that would that that is our that is the plan. Um, yeah, and at at death to be able to let go and not cling on to a new womb, that is what we're hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank good point. So I just thought that it might bring the sufferings to an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good point. Very good point. That is the ultimate goal. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I think Indy had a hand up. <clears throat> Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Buddha Saradai, it's so nice to see you, Ben Rupert nice. Baker. Sad, sad, sad. Uh, uh -huh. um, no, it's just, um, it's a very deep subject, extremely, um, you know, just in lay terms, it's something that we all avoid, isn't it? The, the thought of mm -hmm. death. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, I think, most of our life, all our lives, we, mm -hmm. you know, we live life to avoid death, dodge death. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, from going mm -hmm. to hospital or taking medications or crossing the road carefully or all that kind of thing, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know how I would actually um, deal with having to go to bed every night and think about death mm -hmm. and dying, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's because death, the thought of death brings up so much fear in one, mm -hmm. you know, and um, just fear and worry and all that kind of thing. But maybe um, mm -hmm. it's not as, you know, um, terrible as we think. And as Janaki said, you know, um, it's the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's the continuation of the circle of life, you know. Mm. So I just want to just uh, respond to that. Mm. That's that's all, you know. And um, yeah, 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 thank yeah. you for um, thank you for kind mm. of you know opening our eyes to that. You know that um, it's something mm. that we need to be aware of and mm. you know, um, live each day mm. to our best mm. ability. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, India is right. We, uh, it's just, it's, it's, I guess as, as a Buddhist nun, I've been thinking about death for a long time, but for the average, for, for, for normal people, that's what we do. We avoid it at all costs. More so the death of our loved ones, you know, that is what scares us the most. So, yeah. The idea is the more that you contemplate it in a in a gentle way, in a sort of a, a, a simple way, then the more when it the more that we get accustomed to it. And when it does happen, we are not so shocked. We are not so hurt by it. So this is kind of like very gently, slowly getting ourselves um, just at ease with the idea for our benefit. Because like I said, when we are at ease with the idea, we also treat other people better. We, um, we appreciate the people around us um, because we, we know they're not always going to be there. So it actually is for your benefit, not to scare you, but it's for your benefit. Okay, Joe, Joe was next, I think. Um, Venerable, do you want to take the Question in ah. the chat, then we go to Joel. All right, okay, okay, sorry, I've sort of missed all, yeah, thanks for working, Let, let's see. Um, okay, uh, thank you for this wonderful talk and reflection, Venerable Upeka. I was thinking that the death count contemplation as taught in today's guided meditation and talk could also help in relaxing the body and slowly letting it fade away, shifting awareness to the breath and mind. Yeah, exactly. Recently, I have been exploring ways to contemplate the death of the ego. Do you have any tips on this? Sorry if this is a bit out of topic, death of the ego. Yeah, gosh. Well, all those practices, all our practices is about the, that's what we're trying to do, kill our egos. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... So, yes, the entire Buddha's teaching really <laughs> is tips on, <laughs> on, on killing the ego. Yeah. But, yeah, all those practices are to help you relax and to help the mind to kind of, as Janaki said, prepare for actually true, truly letting things go and not letting it re-arise, i.e. for the sense of self to finally die. That's what we're, that's what we're, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a relief. So it's not something that's morbid, but we're, we're preparing ourselves for, for, for the joy of absolutely release from this ego that is driving us nuts. So, yes. <laughs> yes. So it is a good, good practice for that. Um, Joe. Have I, uh, uh, sorry, Manori, if there are any questions in the chat, please let me know because I'm busy sort of. I will, few, I will, yeah. I will, we'll have Joel and then Joan and then after okay. Richard. Okay. Hi. Yeah.
Go hi. I'm always a bit shy to talk in public, but uh, actually my work is I'm working yeah. with death. Uh, right. so I'm I'm working with the uh, suicide suicide mm. patients, uh, and I think it's really interesting. So I'm working with them in a very cute uh, time, uh, actually often. T- hours, days after they have tra- tried to take their life. Uh, and the interesting thing there is that they often see the world as better without them. Uh, they often mm. think their kids are better off if they are dead, uh, but uh, mm. if if they are alive, for example. Um, mm. So, so in, in some way, you, I think you use this because you mm. use, you try to make them live their life more skillful in a way if mm-hmm. i try to draw a parallel to the to today's topic mm. wow so it's so, it's, a, it's a lovely job uh, many people yeah. think it's, it's it's very hard but uh, it gives you so much love and energy in some in some oh. way yeah <laughs> oh, amazing yeah but, uh, uh, but i i i love the death contemplations and i mm. really think it uh, had been uh, very helpful in in my in my work i've been practicing for about five six years for death mm. contemplation and it's mm. i know it's really really hard in the beginning uh, mm. but yeah i love it mm. thank you yeah sure yeah thank you that that answers um one a question from Ian, who is my friend from 25 years ago. Hi, Venerable. It's so great to see you again after 23 years. Okay. Very grateful for that. I almost lost my mom two and a half years ago in COVID. She is still with us, but is bedridden now. I am so scared to lose her. How do we prepare for someone else's death? Someone who are, who are truly close to you, like parents, children, close friends. The thought of it can be really painful. Yeah, that's interesting. So um, it's uh, like Joel said, he's been doing it for six years. Um, It starts off difficult, uh, but it's as we practice it, our mind changes um, from that they're no longer they don't belong to us. Um, yeah. So just, just you have to do it in a very gentle way, in a way that I, I reflect on the goodness of my parents' life. I, I reflect on, say, if my uh, mom or dad were to pass away, I think... Um, uh, how great people, what great people they have been. I'm really fortunate to have had a mom like that. I'm really fortunate to have had a dad like that. So I'd rather think of the fact that, I, that I'm going to lose them. I think of how lucky I am to have, to have had them. And I think of all the good, thing they, good things they've done for us, done for me. And... Um, what beautiful people they are, and just the memory of their 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 lives brings me happiness. So I'm I'm um, I think oh how fortunate I am to have had them. Uh, yeah. So as, as you you just you know as you do it, you your mind just thinks of ways. Like Joel said, you know it becomes something very beautiful. It's not something morbid, and when um, when it does happen, you you are ready. You've prepared yourself. Yeah, I don't know if that's helpful. Anyway, um. <laughs> I'll unmute John. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon or good evening or good morning, everybody. And lovely Hello. to see you, Venerable. Lovely to see you. I'm glad that you've had a beautiful retreat as well, or a good yeah. retreat. It's gone so Thank quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 
thank you very much for today's um reflections and this re this meditation was brought about a great sense of gratitude and peace in me mm, interesting. um and these are one reflection I would just like to share was the there's the gratitude of finding a community in a sangha and and your good self and venerable chanda mm. for i I'm, a, I'm quite an adventurous person I think of coming towards death with people good people around me mm. and not being afraid, but being excited to know mm. and hold, holding, almost like holding hands with my good friends, my good community to take me forward and to... The... Mm, lovely. Right. So thank you so much. Right. That's my reflection, really. Right, 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 yeah. So... I don't know if, if that can resonate for anybody else, but it certainly resonates for me, so... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sad, sad, sad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, spiritual friends, having friends who are who are real, you know, they're not fake friends, and friends who are um um who who are down to earth. They're a great blessing. It keeps you from flying off with the fairies, uh, getting lost in life. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I will unmute uh, Richard. I'm just hiding a moment. Hello, Richard. Uh, I hope you had a very good retreat in Australia. Um, basically, um, as, far as, as far as death meditation is concerned, um, I found a couple of years ago, you know, sort of, you know, um, so myself, when I was doing a meditation one time, I was getting quite deep in the meditation, so my mm -hmm. mind became very silent, and I mm -hmm. sort of just happened to go back into a previous lifetime, my last mm -hmm. lifetime, disappeared to be that way. And I went back to Sri Lanka, and I was in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. lived back in Sri Lanka, it was really weird. Mm -hmm. and I, only for a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds or so. It appeared mm. to be this way anyway. Mm. My mm. And then I came mm. back to the present moment, a bit shocked, thinking what the hell was I doing in Sri Lanka in my meditation. And right. it just it appeared it was like a, a recollection of a previous of my last mm. lifetime being mm. in Sri Lanka. So ever since then, I've always mm. thought about well, that's a very good recollection. So it, it always felt like it was a real you know, like as if I had really gone back into my last lifetime in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. since then it's really helped me, you mm -hmm. know, in contemplating death and contemplating that, for example, if that was actually true, that I actually did go back to my last lifetime in Sri Lanka, then mm -hmm. who were my parents and who were my family? And who mm -hmm. were, Was I married? Did I have children? You know, who were they? You know, who were these beings? Mm -hmm. You know, what was I doing there? You know, mm -hmm. and, um, how did I die? You know, mm -hmm. and how did I get reborn in this lifetime? You know, mm -hmm. and it makes me, it's very, content, very good contemplation, I found, mm -hmm. because then it helps me to reflect about my parents in this lifetime mm -hmm. and, and my, you know, all my sisters and all my all sisters' children that I love very much. And, you know, they have their lifetimes and they're, you know, I can't control them. I can't, I don't know where they came from. Mm. You know, it's like that, you know. It's, it's very good. I find very, very helpful contemplation mm. because of that. I don't know if I did go back in my, to my last lifetime in the meditation. Mm. I don't know. But it felt like that for a couple of minutes. And ever since then, I've always felt like that's very helpful. It helps me mm. to remember that, you know, that's not just this one life that mm. have been, you know, be born before, and when I die, I'm going to get reborn somewhere else or someone completely different or a different right. body, different right. mind, depending on the karma, you know. So right. I always find it very helpful personally. It's given me a very good perspective. 
Wow. More than one lifetime. So I felt mm-hmm. like I've, it really just genuinely feel like I've had, um, had that. I've always felt mm-hmm. that very helpful. Wow. I find that very good reflection on Dev. Mm-hmm. So very, very nice meditation as well. Thank you. Yeah. yeah That's my reflection on meditation today. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. That's precisely what the Buddha asked us to uh, ref- to 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 do. Well, one of his insights was into past lives, and so when you see your past life, you go like, "Oh my God, these these people in my life right now who I think to be so it, my children, my parents, they're just beings. Next, who who who? They're just." You know, who was I before? Who am I now? Who I who will I be? You can't say there is one Richard who is going to exist into eternity and who has always existed. Who is this me and my people that I take to be so solid? It is just, I was a Sri Lankan man. Who will I be next time? Who am I? I? Tell me whether I was a man or a woman, I don't know. Right, right, right. It's only, right. it's only up about a minute, 30 seconds or so. Right, you know, right, right. In the but it helps us not take this this uh, Richard so seriously. Yes. It's Who very, is Richard? Yes. Yeah. It's very, very comical sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Venema. Thank you, Richard, for sharing that. Uh-huh. Um, yes, I'll unmute Bele. Yeah. Hello, Venerable. Hello. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Um, I was just wanting to share that um, I, for me, the contemplation of death, um, which I, I think I do very regularly for various reasons because of nearly dying several times in my life wow. and also um, living with mm-hmm. chronic health condition, which can sometimes get quite severe. Mm-hmm. And also I've got no living family. Um, mm-hmm. So, and also being a Buddhist, I know it's important to recollect that as much as possible. But I do find uh, what I wanted to share is that it's really sobering like it's really, really sobering. So for me, it doesn't necessarily bring up joy. It It's just incredibly sobering and it brings up a feeling of urgency to, mm. um, to just, it's sobering and, and it brings up that a feeling of urgency, like what's most important. But I, I do find it, it's not, um, joyful Mm. it's just really sobering which might not be a bad thing you know because it gets things in very clear perspective as you were saying Mm. and um I also noticed tonight that um that reflection that you said well would we send that email or would we do I don't know if you said that maybe I thought that would we send that email or say that thing to that person Mm. if we knew that they would die tomorrow that's really really Mm. a wonderful contemplation to like Mm. bring up but then what about um when we feel like lots of regret you know for things that we have done Right. You know, maybe right. not majorly bad things, but right. not so right. skillful. Right. And then we're like, oh, it's right. already done. I guess then we need to forgive ourselves or something. But right, 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 right. Well, it's what better you that think? you work on it now than you work on it at your on your deathbed. So that's right. But yeah. it is now. That's the thing. It's when we really take death to heart. It is all now, and it feels like I have to do it all now. I have to make up for all my mistakes and everything, like, right now. That's what I mean. Like, it's it's really, like, that crucial because it really could be tonight, you know. Mm. So, or could be. When we really take it to heart, it's like, oh, my gosh, 
it is all now. I have to, you know, purify everything now. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Well, um, you, we have to be able to 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 accept our mistakes, and um, and uh, yeah, ask for forgiveness. Sometimes it might be about matter of making a actually sending that email to that person who you thought you hurt, and saying um, at least in your mind, you know. Uh, saying please forgive me first step just do it in my, your mind before sending the email um yeah to actually you're right it is it is it, it is a burden it's, it is a burden <laughs> yeah and worth it's it yeah yeah do it do it do it clear the slate yeah, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I think we have come to the end of the session. Thank you so much, Bel, and thank you, everyone. There are lots of um, uh, very lovely comments, um, which uh, um, which I there's only yeah I I I, I that I hope I haven't missed anything. Sean says, doesn't death contemplation itself kill the ego? That's the point. Yes, thank you, Sean. Death contemplation itself kills the ego. Yeah. So if um, there is nothing else, we will wrap up for now and Manori will just conclude. Yeah, and thank you very much, Venerable Upeka. And uh, we we ran out of time, but I know that um, all of us are here very eagerly, and it it is uh, such a such a wonderful uh, personal kind of a talk. Um, so um, I kind of thank you, thank thank all of you, the Anukampa community, and uh, Venerable Upeka for this wonderful talk. Um, and all these talks, um, the programs are uh, provided for you uh, by Anukampa Bhikkhuni Project. Uh, it is Venerable Chandas and, uh, you know, uh, Venerable Chandas' brainchild. Um, and it can give all these wonderful things to the community, to the wider world, because we are recording this. We are putting it into the YouTube. Um, and... Um, so uh, then what can we do about it? How can we get involved in this? Um, so that is where um, we, uh, I wanted to highlight about the dana. So dana is um, doing something good and getting a good karma. And it could be anything. It could be finances. It could be a donation. It could be um, a meal to a good person, the sangha. Um, um, uh, any of those things. So if you are able to give a financial donation, if you want to do a dana to Anukampa, we have put the link there. And if you want to get involved in a different way, please contact team at anukampaproject.org. Um, and when, when Venerable Chanda is back after her vasa, um, uh, we kind of start the normal programs in December. Uh, so you can contact the team at anukampaproject.org and see how, how else you can get uh, involved. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Manori, and thank you, everyone, for coming and sharing. And it was really just lovely to see everyone again. <laughs>